the days of general employment are over. We're not gonna have folks laying bricks. We're not gonna have folks driving trucks. It's about automation. It's about robotics. It's about emerging technologies. And a lot of our educational leaders are not seeing that just yet. And so what are our people going to do? Slime. If it's true that the days of general employment's over, our young people need a STEM-centric experience. Our um, superintendent of Bridgeport saw that right away and did what he had to do to get the board involved and get uh, folks involved to make this decision for 20,000 kids. So excited to be here today to celebrate our STEM Fest 2022 in collaboration with 21st Century Ed. A day like today sparks interest in a possible engineer, a possible teacher, a possible architect, because they see STEM education relating to real life and not just in a textbook. So they can see it, they can touch it, they can experience it. Flying drones and rockets and levitation and all of these cool experiences. And then you have their parents and their teachers and their colleagues. And all of a sudden now, the culture is shifting because it's not just about what you can do in the classroom. It's firing up the entire community to say, hey, look, you have a whole lot of young people in this community. If given the opportunity, they could be the next rocket scientist. And for me, if, if I'm not too careful, I might be off in a corner, corner doing, doing this stuff because historically what we've said is that certain students have a STEM disposition. Every student is STEM capable. We need them to fill the, the current workforce gaps and to become the workforce of the future. I think the number is up to 695,000 computing jobs that we're not able to fill. Cybersecurity jobs almost, you know, a, mil a four million globally that we're not gonna be able to fill. So when we look at these school districts that are really rocking it, you, you have a leader who is saying, look, you can't argue with a readied kid. In fifth grade, we had two teachers who combined their ideas. And they kept creating, creating, and then finally they did some robotics in the classroom with the kids, all hands on. Well, that class, that particular class, had 45% at or above proficient in the science aspect, on the NGSS aspect. And, and what's, okay? the, what's the average across the district? The average or? across the district might be, you know, 17 to 23%, wow. depending on the school. This is what matters, and this is what the kids love. And so this is what they will work at and what they will focus on, and all kids. Not just the bright ones, all kids. Yeah. Bridgeport being a, a STEM city oh. is, a, is a power move. As of here and now, with this proclamation, you're going to declare Bridgeport, with the position of the superintendent, a STEM city. A STEM city. It gives our kids the tools they need to find the jobs that they may be interested in. It opens opportunities for them that they never had before. It's happening faster than we think it is. We sign contracts with districts, and I, I remember one in particular, they had 3,000 students, and they were not doing any STEM. So that's 3,000 kids that will have to wait. Their dreams for participating in a vibrant 21st century economy will be deferred. We are at that point where we need to invite as many people as we possibly can to engage in this work of getting our students ready. Our children can't wait for us to putz around and figure it out. Are you with me?